Oh, what's good, man? My name is Flumlo Grass. Want to welcome y'all to the new series, How Friends Became Rivals. Um, What's going to happen in this video is quite a lot. There's multiple different phases to this. So this is the introduction real quick. Give me a few seconds just to explain to you what to expect throughout the course of this entire video. I want you to sit back, get comfortable. All right, longer video, you already see the time. All right, first phase of the video, we're gonna actually give you the story, the whole backstory of this. It's probably about five minutes long, so kick back and enjoy it. I wanna send a quick shout out to Vintage Baller. He sent me the GTA footage that you'll see incorporated into the story, man. Thank you, bro, I definitely appreciate it, y'all. His YouTube channel is linked in the description, go and check him out. And I'm resending the invitation to everybody. If you wanna recreate these characters in GTA and have them just doing everyday stuff and upload that footage to YouTube and let me know, tweet it at me, get in contact with me somehow, drop me that link, I can use that stuff in the series. Doesn't really matter what you're doing, I prefer to have a backlog of footage that I can purpose and use how I want to when it's time to use. Now, thus the title, How Friends Became Rivals, this series stars two different players who were very different. All that will be explained in the backstory. After the backstory portion, we're gonna go to one of the players, you're gonna see him play a game, we'll go to the other player, we're gonna see him play a game. That'll all be in this episode one in the future. They probably won't both play at the same time at least not every episode one episode might star one character one might be the other character sometimes it'll be both you know it just depends but if y'all are digging this series make sure you let me know you're digging this so i can decide how often i actually want to do this man the like goal for this first episode is 1000 likes that's what we're shooting for let's try to go get it without further ado friends become rivals let's kick it off how friends became rivals this is the story of two Georgia kids that grew up together. They had each other's backs, but life had different plans for each of them. In this RTG, we'll follow both players through their senior year in high school, college, and depending on their popularity and the way that they actually perform, the duo may be carried over into Madden 18, if they both even make the league, that is. Let's start with Jarrell Jackson, born to be a star. Raised by his rich uncle after his parents were too unstable for a child. Don't feel bad for Jarrell though. To him, his uncle was basically his pops. As a kid, he kept him fresh. Jays, cool clothes, even allowed Jarrell to grow his hair out as a kid. He was the only middle school kid with braids. He was also tall and had swag and confidence. He was a star. Now, Jarrell's buddy Alvin, total opposite. Alvin was short and shy. He lived with both his parents, who worked multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Alvin wore ratty clothes, had one pair of boots his dad had given him, and he wore those boots every single day. When you grow up not having a lot, you appreciate what you have. So Alvin loved his boots. However, every day he went to school, Jarrell and a few of his friends would pick on Alvin for his clothes. One day, Jarrell's buddies got on Alvin's boots and wouldn't let up. Alvin was literally trembling. And Jarrell was like, all right, man, that's, that's dip, bro. Jarrell's friends kept at it, though. Soon, Alvin snapped. Despite being half the guy's size, he put Jarrell's buddy in the chokehold and had no intention of letting him go. Jarrell broke it up and was like, damn, man, you gonna kill him? It's just some boots, man. Then they were all sent to the principal's office. When Jarrell's uncle got there, he chewed Jarrell out. He explained that Alvin's family was a hardworking family who didn't have all the blessings that he did. Maybe that's Alvin's only pair of boots, he said. Why you hanging out with these losers anyway? Look, I ain't raised no bully. That's weak. They ain't being a man. Jarrell thought long and hard about these words from his uncle. He felt terrible. Later that day, he walked to Alvin's house to apologize and realized that Alvin wasn't living like he was. He and Alvin had a long talk and came to an understanding. Jarrell even gave Alvin a bunch of his old clothes and shoes from a few years back. They were in great condition, and Jarrell couldn't fit him no more, but Alvin sure could. From that point on, the two were inseparable. Jarrell was training to be a quarterback and was going to every QB camp he could get to. When Jarrell wanted to take Alvin along with him, his uncle had no issue forking out the extra bread so that Alvin could have these experiences as well. Now, Jarrell had a cannon. He was born with it. Accuracy needed some work, but his raw arm talent alone would make him a star. He was a pretty highly sought after prospect. Darrell wasn't very fast, probably due to the fact that he struggled with his weight a little bit. 
As a big kid, you know, he ate whatever you put in front of him. Wasn't much of a workout warrior, but he was naturally strong and just really didn't seem to need it. Alvin, on the other hand, had become a workout warrior. Because he was always small, he was always in the gym trying to build himself up. But as things would go with poor Alvin, he was a hard gainer and was still very small. When it came to throwing the football, his arm strength was lacking. But he had pretty good accuracy, decent athleticism, and the heart of a champion. To be clear, his athleticism wasn't off the charts, but you know, he can get the job done. When they hit high school, 9th through 11th grade, Alvin was Jarrell's backup at Buford High in Georgia. Alvin was more than happy to be in this position. Jarrell was his boy and Alvin knew he wasn't going anywhere in football. He just did it to hang out with Jarrell. But the summer going into the boy's senior year, Alvin's dad got a new job. This meant a raise for the family. This meant a better lifestyle. It was amazing. One catch though, Alvin had to relocate from Buford to Manchester. So the family would be living a bit better, but Manchester's football team was a lot worse. Alvin wasn't much thinking about playing football when he got there. Besides, he had only really played to hang out with his boy Jarrell. Now there was no way that was gonna happen. But when Alvin got to Manchester, the coach begged him to join the team. It was still about a month before the season started and the coach knew he was in trouble. He was on his last leg and probably about to lose his job. Alvin didn't have a problem with playing. He was just shocked that the coach wanted him this bad. He was like, man, they begging to get me to play. This team must really be trash. Turns out the team wasn't so bad. They just needed some direction. They needed a leader. Now, Buford's offense was built around Jarrell, built around his strengths, arm strength. A lot of deep passes and mostly just kind of letting Jarrell wing it and do his thing. Manchester, on the other hand, tailored their offense more to Alvin's strengths. Let him run some option, throw some short, quick passes. Every now and then, Alvin could sprinkle in some magic and just freelance and do his thing. When Alvin told Jarrell he'd be starting for Manchester, Jarrell was excited for his friend. He was happy for him. He also thought it was a little bit funny knowing Alvin's skill level. But he figured, hell, at least my partner get to start and actually get on the field for one year before he's out of football completely. Jarrell was already verbally committed to the University of Georgia. He wanted to stay close to his uncle and play for his home state. Alvin had no offers. Not yet anyway. But stay tuned. Okay, whoa, what's good, man? My name is Flim Low Raps. If you're looking at this part, it means you made it through the backstory. Hopefully, y'all dug it. Let me know in the comment section right now who do you think is going to be your favorite character. I've already written this one out, man. We got some twists, we got some turns. We're ready to go. All right, so what's going to happen is we're going to go through the rest of Jarrell and Alvin's senior year in high school. Already played their first game just to get a little bit of a. Uh, you know, I needed some content, I needed some uh, some highlights. So we're gonna go from this point forward. Now, let me explain this right now. Once these guys go to college, what's gonna happen is, uh, it's gonna basically be a dynasty, but we're gonna treat it like a road to glory, like, like I was doing in that online league I was doing. And whatever happens to the online league, I'll explain that in another video, not now. But when we do the dynasty, that way I'll be able to control both players and they'll be in the same universe if we do RTG, Y'all know the limitations with that. There's a, a lot of other cool things. I'm gonna actually explain this now. One, I can set these guys exactly how I want them attribute wise and not make them amazing ever, right? So I could cap them. Now, I could cap them where they can basically only get to a certain point at certain things. They can't get to 99 everything. That will never happen in this series. It's gonna be completely different than every other series we've done so far. Each of these guys will hopefully progress, but they'll only see significant progression in the spots that they're great at right now. now I'm not gonna say they won't improve at all in the other spots, but they'll only see significant progression in their key spots. So for Jarrell, that's his arm strength. He's a pocket passer who needs to work on his accuracy a bit. For Alvin, his arm's not gonna get that much stronger. You feel me? Like, people's arms don't go from Chad Pennington to Jamarcus Russell. Like, it just doesn't happen. So, he might build it up some, but you feel me? There's a cap. So, enjoy the story. Let it play out. We're gonna jump in Jarrell's game first. I wanted to go through this stuff. I showed this in the story, but just go through it one more time for the people that might not have been paying attention, might have missed it. Jarrell's a big kid. 6'6, 232 pounds, cannon arm, not mobile. Jamarcus Russell is kind of the player that he reminds you of, you know, skill set wise. I'm not saying he's like Jamarcus Russell 
it, you know, being a bust in the NFL, but I just mean skill set wise. Oh, forgot to explain this real quick. When I play with Jarrell, at least right now, I may change this later. But for now, every pass I throw with Jarrell, I have to zip it. He's a cannon. He has no touch. Every pass I throw with Alvin, I have to lob it. He doesn't have any arm strength. Good accuracy, though. And, you know, he kind of understands the game. All right, bam. So every pass is a zip with Jarrell, whether that's the appropriate throw or not. Mm, let's go. And keep in mind, Jarrell the beast now. Ooh. Got to clean up that accuracy sign. There we go. I'm going to try not to even roll out too much with Jarrell. I mean, he, he can roll out, but I'm going to try to keep it as pocket quarterback as I can. Oh, let's go. Nice. He already committed to Georgia, son. No Georgia lightning ball with them cannons, man. Oh, score that. Mm, let's go. Bang. See, Jarrell, I like most quarterbacks with super strong arm when they're young, especially even when they get older most of the time. They think they can make every throw, and sometimes they get them in trouble. Sometimes they make an amazing Brett Favre play and squeeze it in there. Sometimes they throw a pick that just looks like the worst pick ever thrown. Jarrell got to get his footwork better, too. Shake. Bruh. Damn. Big. Oh! <laughs> you see what I mean, dog? Like, honestly, I knew that was a pig, bro. All right, first and 10. So catch together yourself. Run the touchdown, please. Let's go. Mm, go. Damn. We tried for his one. Again, sometimes we look too confident, man. We look too confident. We gotta play it, play it a little smarter. Ah, let's eat. Why would he stop running? 10. Mm, Z. Bing. Let's eat. Ooh. Ah. Mm. Come on, we trying to be out the game by the fourth quarter, man. Let's go ahead and run these boys up out of here. Ah, nice. Yeah, in the stove, mm. on the corner of my road. I should have took Dang, the boat. Yeah, I could have took the boat. Yeah, I could have took it. Yeah, I'll be ah. on the bus. All my friends mm. going up. Bang. Yeah, who's the real plug now? Don't get caught. I guess that Dang might be us now. Yeah. Always on the road. I Stupid as hell. Come on, real. Get your legs in down the field, man. <laughs> Everybody down the field waiting on us. Here we go. Here we go. Bang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we finished with 507 yards, 37 of 59 passing, uh, five touchdowns. We also threw three 
interception from forcing the ball in there. But Jarrell is beasting. As usual, putting up gaudy stats, gaudy numbers, crazy yards, crazy TDs, and throwing pretty much the entire game. Now, in the future, like I said, we'll see what people respond to. If we want one at a time, I might do two at a time. I might just change it up every now and then, just depending. We'll see. But for this first episode, I wanted to get every aspect of the series in this one long episode. So that's what we're doing. All right, man. So jumping over here to Alvin, like, I don't like... I don't, I don't say I don't love. I don't even like the high school triple option that they have that they call most of the time. But once we go to college, this won't be an issue. But for now, we got to run what is available. I'm going to definitely shorten these high school quarters next week. High school quarters don't need to be five minutes. But Jarrell had five minutes, so I wanted to give my man five minutes. Oh, let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Man, why they got 18 people over there and we run the read option, dog? I feel like that's kind of cheap, don't you think? That's why I would cut right back over there. Oh, remember, I got to throw everything as a lob <laughs> to represent the weak arm strength. It actually did hit live there. Hey, let's go! Touchdown, baby. Bing! All right, let's eat. Let's eat. Ah. All right, man. Third and eight. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Yo, it's funny because there's so many throws that you just can't make at all when you can't zip. Like, that's such an easy throw to make, but when you can't zip it, it changes things. Let's go, baby. Oh, get out of there. Get, get out. Give me that first. Alvin is struggling, dog. We can't really complete any meaningful passes. Oh, coach wanna go for it on fours. Alright. Let's let's change some stuff up. Cause this play ain't really working. <laughs> Man, we're three of nine passing. We can't do much. Cause we need to get back to that option. So many dudes is teleporting out there. Like, did you see that? Man, defense keep holding up. Keep holding up. But we can't score. God. But get scored. Can we complete a pass? Oh, we got first. Get out of bounds. I can make this. If I throw it right, like now, bam, perfect. There you go. You gotta really have your time and perfect. Get that touch. Cause remember, we got de decent accuracy. We just ain't got no arm strength like talking about. Oh, I'm out. Let's eat. I ain't gonna stand down. When you lobbing every pass, bro, <laughs> they become a little bit more challenging, which is hilariously fun. Cause the ball takes so long to get there, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Oh, <laughs> 10. Oh, every throw. So you really gotta anticipate and throw it early like that. Ooh, break that. Way to fight, way to fight. Let's go for it. Ha 
Good job, boy. Did it this re at this triple option? You just never know where this might take you, bruh. Oh, let's go, big boy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yo, let's go! Yeah, you know what to do. Stay inbound. Let it be smart. Oh, quarter was over anyway. Go. Oh, good block. Oh, come on, bro. Back out. Let's eat. Let's go, baby. That was so weak, bruh. Oh, man, he ran right where I need to be. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Touchdown, baby. That's how you run it right there. That's running it to perfection. Let's go. All right, man, 10 completions, uh, less than 50% passing, 127 pass yards. Two touchdowns, we did throw a pick, but we had 117 rush yards, and that was my boy Alvin balling out. All right, man, so there it is, how friends become rivals. You got the backstory, you saw Jarrell play, and you saw Alvin play. Hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what y'all think. Do you like the series? Are you digging it? If you do, what you like about it? If you don't, what you don't like about it? Which character is your favorite? Why? Remember, like goes 1,000 likes. Let's try to go get that. Subscribe if you're new. And be sure to check out the rest of the episodes if you're watching this link. My name is Flumlo Raps, and I'm going to holler at you next time, bruh.